uh, I have received uh, a lot of uh, uh, warning threats in the past, but I mean in this particular month, uh, I received more than any other month. Uh, and it's come from various sources, you know, from uh, totally anonymous or, you know, from someone whom I know. Uh, I thought that I keep it, I wanted to keep it to myself. And not until I received uh, two anonym, anonymous phone calls, just about a week before I left Japan. I'm, I was quite certain that uh, <clears throat> that person called me from Thailand. Uh, it's a Thai guy. Uh, raised, uh, he spoke very quickly and said something like, you know, be careful, you bastard, something like that. Uh, be careful in what you say. And especially if you don't stop talking about one or two, uh, you're going to get hurt, something like that. And he hung up the phone. I was still shocked and then I didn't know what to do. Then another phone uh, rang and then uh, I picked the phone once again and basically he almost said the same thing. Only, only the second time that he knew, see, he seemed to know my movement that I know that you'll be back in Thailand on this day, day, day. and then uh, you'll be at uh, Ubon Rush, uh, Ubon and also at Thamasa. Again, he said that, you know, you're going to get hurt. So, uh, what what this thing tell us, especially me in particular, I think it's tell me that, you know, uh, talking about the media, we all know that the media in Thailand, especially those who work in Thailand, have worked uh, under extreme pressure, you know, from not necessarily from the government, but I, I would I would put it from the Thai state. The power holder, the real power holders in Thailand. Uh, you know, the, the you want to call it, you know, the establishment, the traditional elite or whatever you want to call it, I think, but I'm sure that the pressure, you know, come from uh, those people. Uh, well, that is understandable when it comes to the media. But what I cannot accept, and I will not, I will not accept, and I will continue to fight against, is that the attack now or the intimidation now uh, uh, coming into the academic community. Uh, again, it's sure that the those who are now become uh, the enemy of the academic community, they are suddenly feel so insecure about themselves, about insecure that you know the academic community would uh, kind of uh, they have this imagination that the, the academic community uh, wants to attack, you know, for example, the monarchy, uh, or become a part of the Red Church movement, that's what they think, or become, you know, even they can go as far as becoming uh, uh, those who work for Kutak Sin Shinawan, something like that. Well, <laughs> I mean, basically, Kutak Sin can buy everything in the world, you know, and uh, including the academic. I'm, I'm still waiting for the check from Kun Haksin. After all this year, since 2006, I'm still waiting and waiting. I still haven't got a single bar from him. I think it's our job as an, as an academia. It's our responsibility to, to give an, onion, uh, an, 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 an honest opinion uh, about, about what's happening in Thailand, especially uh, you know, talking, about Thai, talking about the Thai situation. When you talk about the Thai situation, it's almost impossible not to talk about the role of the monarchy. I think that, that what they find sensitive. And uh, because of the of the, of the connection between uh, the monarchy and what they think uh, is a part of the national security, you know, uh, it's always very useful and very convenient for them to link two together. Whenever you talk about the monarchy, it means that you are now talking about national security. If you talk, uh, you know, bad about the monarchy, it means you know you talk bad, you think bad about national security. So that kind of give them a legitimacy to intervene to interfere, to attack, to control, you know, uh, all sort of things. There are a number of mechanisms that the traditional elite, the power holders, use to uh, undermine opponents, used, used to uh, curb, uh, you know, those who have different opinions. One is a military coup, and that's obvious. You know, I, I'm sure that they cannot do it too often now. Uh, I am even, you know, I can predict that there would not be any an, another military coup, as long as, you know, uh, during the rest of the Pumikon period, I don't think there would be uh, another military coup. When if they don't, if they can't use military coup, then they turn to other kind of mechanism and weapons. One of them is a the judicial coup. You know, it's happened every now and then, 2008 twice. We have seen it last month. You know, it's gonna be more and more, I believe. Uh, the other, the other mechanism is Article 112. You know, and Article 112. Uh, as you see clearly before the military coup, there are there were just a few cases about less majestic 
and uh, Les Majestés were used only among the political elites. Thaksin, one of them, you know, I mean Thaksin, he might believe that he's a, he's a victim of one to himself, but when he was in power, he also used Les Majestés law, you know, to undermine his opponent too, you know, Thaksin filed a charge, uh, you know, a complaint against Kun Son Thi Tong Run, and you know, Son Thi did the same thing, Thaksin did with the Democrat Party, you know, for using the monarchy as part of the election campaign, uh, Democrat, uh, you know, did the same thing. But after 2006, basically everyone in Thailand used one one two against each against one another. You know, and it's become it become uh, just how to say it, it has been exploited so much for political purposes. And then there is one particular guy uh, known in, in, in the name of iPad, uh, who uh, is basically sitting in front of the computer 24 hours, especially you know keep looking what going on in the Thai website for Shah Thai. And then whenever he see anything that he doesn't like about it, he suddenly become a self-proclaimed, you know, uh, defender, hyper royalist. I don't know what word I should say. Especially when he engage into a, a discussion with a particular person, and he cannot, he cannot win that argument. Then he became really bitchy about it. Uh, the only thing he can do is to file a complaint against that person. And altogether, he, I don't know whether I'm wrong, but I, I think the number was was quite correct. He already have filed a, a file complaint against 15, 16, 17 people. You know, those who uh, contribute article uh, uh, to uh, Prashant Thai website. Basically, the, the full time full time job for this guy is to go to the police station, and then, then you know, uh, <clears throat> this is going to show that how crazy people can you know can go, and uh, it's also show the the serious flaw of the article one one two, which allow any anyone who can you know, go to the police station and to file a complaint against anyone else. Uh, I think first, you must you must understand that the, the priority of the foreign ministry this day, you know, no longer about forging good relationship, you know, that is in your dream. Of course, it's still in the list of, you know, uh, what the foreign ministry must do, you know, uh, building good relationship with neighboring country, you know, uh, participating actively in the, you know, international organization, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the real priority for the foreign ministry, foreign ministry this day, especially during the Kasipiro period, is to defend the monarchy abroad. That is the first uh, priority. And because of that, the foreign ministry instructed, uh, you know, the Thai embassy, the Thai diplomatic mission, and also a consulate anywhere in the world to closely monitor virtually everyone, not only the academic, you know, who live outside Thailand. No matter you are Thai or you are foreign or you are, you know, foreigners of. Uh, uh, your your opinion uh, on certain institutions, you know, including the, the monarchy and also even the army institution. Apart from that, uh, they use a bilateral mechanism, you know, to put a pressure on. And there is a case of the uh, Austrian Australian National University. And I had a, I had a chance to interview uh, the, the founder of the father of New Mandala, which is the, the website about, you know, uh, everything going on in Southeast Asia and in particular in Thailand. Very, very critical of everything about Thailand. Uh, Andrew Walker and also uh, Nick Ferrari. And then uh, I, I was told clearly that uh, the Royal Thai Embassy in Canberra, you know, went extra mile to try to put uh, pressure on them uh, using, uh, you know, first of all, they talked to the, the ex ex executive member of the AMU to make sure that you know you have to basically shut them out, shut them out of the uh, of, of the founder and then to close uh, the new mandala. But they have no clue that you know a uh, foreign institution like this. Not only they they refuse to listen to what their own government has to say, and uh, let alone you know listening to what the Thai government has to say. Uh, because I think originally the Thai government would be willing to give certain money, you know, an, an, an amount of money to set up the Thai study center at the at the uh, at the Australian National University, uh, but under the condition that you know you have to close down the new Mandala, but then and you refused to close it down, so uh, the Thai government uh, responded by giving all the money to Melbourne University. So right now the Thai study center is at the uh, Melbourne University, and uh, uh, you know again. Uh, ANU refused to comply with uh, the, the Thai government request and Andrew Walker in particular told me that uh, you know at a personal level the embassy people uh, make it very clear that you know uh, we, we dislike you uh, you are not welcome to Thailand uh, you will be put on a blacklist 
this is just one of the of the example. Another example, uh, the last one, is about the, the publication of the King Never Smile by the Yale University, University Press. As you know, there were attempts, and this is again I said that uh, this happened during the during the, the period of the the Thaksin administration. So uh, Thaksin Thaksin used to be you know a hyper royalist as well. So for those who accuse him of being an anti monarchy it was kind of you know not not quite right. Uh, at the beginning of 2006, when we heard that the uh, Yale University Press would be will, would be published, uh, would be publishing the King of Smile, uh, my my goodness, you know, every single you know uh, top elite they found they found it unacceptable. So they sent representative to uh, to Yale, uh, uh, to, including the, the Thai alumni of Yale University, to talk to uh, big people at the university, even you know to instruct uh, to send someone which I can't name name. Uh, from Thailand to speak to uh, President, uh, uh, former President George Bush, uh, to stop uh, the publication. But Yale argued that argued that uh, the work uh, by Paul Hanley it was really an academic work, and it was really uh, it would be a good contribution to the Thai study, especially in regard to uh, you know this is about the, the bi biography of uh, King Kumi So that there was no reason for them to stop publishing this. So it went ahead, even uh, you know the Thai. Elites and the Thai traditionally Thai try so hard to uh, to stop the publication. If a space for for uh, you know honest discussion about the monarchy in you know in other profession, including the media, you know among the politician, if it will not be possible, I think the academic community is the only hope that uh, we could talk about this honestly. Uh, it's really tragic in the case of Akong and you know not not being a drama queen. When when he passed away on the 8th of May, I was de devastated and I felt that the campaign that I led for to set him free totally failed. You know the effort and everything I did, uh, it, it just it proved useless and I felt really useless uh, that day. I I went to see him uh, just before he died. You know, uh, it was it was such a sad scene. As soon as I, I turned up uh, at the prison, he just went down on the floor, you know, and, and, and kind of like why me so many times. And he said that he was grat grateful that I led the campaign to free him. Uh, and he said one thing that I remember so correctly, that he said, Ajahn, trust me, I did not do it. I knew nothing about it. And I said that, yeah, I, I totally understand. That's why this is what, what we are doing for you. In the case of Akong, I can say that I'm not sure whether you have already seen the, the four messages, because after he passed away, Immediately, uh, the, all the paper, paperwork, you know, from the court just leak out. Well, if you if you have a chance to, to see, I mean, I, I, you can't talk about it. Obviously, uh, it was quite bad. I think I think the I think the content itself is is is, is quite bad. And then uh, uh, that is one thing. One that's one thing that uh, to them is unforgiven about 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 the content itself. But because uh, Akong has become, you know, uh, attracts international attention, there's uh, many groups, including, you know, uh, myself, leading a campaign about it. They felt that they they are now put, they were now put under pressure as well. You know, if we push more and more, and then if they decided to let Akong go or even to grant him a bell, they would feel that they have to succumb to uh, the public pressure, which they do not want it to happen. I think that. There is an attempt on the part of this the poor Thai government, you know, to not to not want to see this thing happen. Uh, I'm not saying this in defense of the of the government because I have nothing to gain from this government and I still continue to criticize uh, Ying Lak uh, all the time. Uh, and people still uh, criticize that this government is not sincere about uh, pushing for reform for 112. It's understandable because I think uh, the, the, the Ying Lak government uh, has wanted to build a working relationship with both the military and also the palace. So why you have to jeopardize your own position, you know, by putting forward the, the amendment of one That is understandable. Behind the scene, though, I have heard also that if possible, maybe the government did not want uh, to to have many cases happen. It's not good for for the reputation of the country, you know, and. Uh, what I want to say is that maybe the government wanted to work from behind the scene rather than at the front, you know, when it comes to uh, the, the issue of less majesty law. Yesterday after my talk, we just went out to, to have some to have some food, you know, with the organizers. Many people uh, 
10 and 15, including leading scholar like scholar like Ajahn Chandwi. And I just felt that you know there's a group of people who you know which that follow us. You know, it, it, it was obvious, and uh, and they they said just only two came away, and more and more we we observed that you know that behavior was very you know very weird. Uh, pretend, pretend to take picture you know anywhere else, but then obviously taking our photo and then we see something like uh, our con conversation was recorded something like that, and eventually it led to almost a confrontation you know between our group and their group. And to the point of, of we almost engaged in a physical, uh, you know, uh, confrontation. I'm sure that those who those who pose a threat, in my case, they're not, they're not the twin, the twin, the twin that uh, did this to Ajahn Warajay. I mean, even the twin, I heard that you know he, he got an order from someone else. Uh, I mean, this is so appalling and so shocking that you know someone who have worked in the state, who have worked for the state would have ordered this thing to happen to ordinary people. This is a case of state internet intimidation against its own citizen. If this is a third person, crazy hyper-royalist, then unacceptable but understandable. But if this would be in the hand of the state, I think it is both, you know, uh, unacceptable and it should be condemned. It, it will be difficult even from now until the, the, the turn uh, you know uh, of, of the royal uh, transition I'm, I'm quite certain that there would still no space for us to talk about it and the one one of the bad thing is that when you are not allowed to talk about it you will not be well prepared to cope with it so basically Thai people will be will be left with having to cope with it when it happened I think this is not wise at all you know. Uh, for the tradi traditional elite, uh, if you wanted to control the game, then you should allow the discussion now. You know to give certain scenario for the Thai people. If you look around, there have been no books by you know a Thai a scholar, both in Thai or in English. You know discuss discussing uh, deeply uh, into the discussion in, into the into the issue of the monarchy. That's why uh, the King Never Smile by Paul Hanley, you know, it's not, you know, some, some of them said that you know, it's not an academic book, but I don't care. I mean, I think that book is val uh, valuable and it's become a, a, a watershed in high studies, you know, especially when it comes to uh, the monarchy. There could be 10 kind of scenarios, you know, uh, uh, when it happened. It could happen like, I often say this, you know, uh, as, as smooth as silk. As would as still that you don't even know that uh, the transition has already uh, is uh, already taking place. You know, life go on. You have new king. You know, everything. Everyone smile, and then you we just forget that we have all the problem. That is one thing. It can turn to the other way. There are a lot of you know uh, confrontation. The red shirt go on the street. The yellow shirt go on the street. The military you know become uh, disintegrated with one group. You know, side siding with another another group in the royal family. The other group you know is chaotic, taxing intervene, you know, and oh my god, and then this time you'll be Pao Ban, Pao Mung, the real thing. <laughs> Not only just one department store, you know, people will start to kill each other. We have will see a lot of retreat going up on the you know sky train, start shooting at people once again. It could turn out to be like that, but it's too soon to say. I have you know it's difficult because we don't have available literature to allow us to look at it more accurately.